Hello everyone, let me tell you about this MacBook Pro 2.1 from 2006. So this machine has been built in late 2006 and is the second model of MacBook Pro with an Intel CPU. Uh, this one is the first one that features a Core 2 Duo, so the CPU is 64 bits, but as far as I understand, it might be that the e on this machine is actually 32 bits. So the first thing that I had to do to make this machine working is I installed a legacy Windows 11 X Lite on a different computer. So I selected a um, CSM a legacy so compatibility in the BIOS and I created a Rufus uh, USB installer in legacy mode because this machine doesn't boot from external USB sticks with Windows in, on, it, on them so I didn't use this machine to install Windows but I had to use another machine and then I took the drive and I put the drive inside the machine the SSD and this allowed me to boot into Windows in legacy mode uh, I had to use a driver booster to get the proper f uh, drivers for the G graphics card, the X1600. As you can see, the driver from this computer is from 2008. It's a fairly old driver and it's still working, but I'm sure that this machine will not perform any kind of games reliably. The GPU fails on the Cinebench uh, OpenGL test for example. So getting audio out was a bit harder because the both Windows Update and um, the driver installation utilities were not able to output anything from the speakers but I found a, a video on the internet that had the uh, link for the proper driver for this and so I now finally have very good audio actually from this machine the speakers are very good as it's a 17 inch and this of course its main use will be like audio production and um, sorry audio playback of course uh, like watching YouTube stuff sadly uh, YouTube performance is quite bad on this and this is probably the worst thing about the machine as I can play 480 480 uh, no problem for for videos and 720 for audio but 1080 is not possible and also to play 720 I have to use uh, edge this is the new edge based on chromium I have found on the internet some videos where they were actually able to play back videos on in 1080p using the old edge uh, which is the um, uh, I think it's from 2020, 22, maybe 21, where they had their own rendering engine, I think, and they were using direct text to uh, process the videos. But yeah, this current version doesn't do that. And so if I use Firefox, for example, I am limited, limited to, yeah, like three, uh, 320, I don't remember, like the, the lowest possible resolution for YouTube videos. Um, yeah, on uh, on Edge it's a little bit better on this, the new Edge with the, the Chromium uh, render engine, but it's still not doing 1080p ever. Uh, even, even 720 can have some little problems. Uh, I didn't test Chrome, uh, I really don't like Chrome. Uh, I heard that uh, lately Chrome has been doing a little bit of like slowing down of YouTube for other browsers, but I don't think that's the issue with this machine. Uh, as far as like scrolling on the web pages, it's still fine. Uh, I would love to use um, Firefox, but yeah, it's just not usable for me on this machine, sadly. Uh, Edge is performing slightly better. So yeah, I also, of course, the, the Wi-Fi card is, is quite old and that's also doing its part. I didn't uh, upgrade it. I didn't want to swap the Wi-Fi cards yet, but I might do that in the future. 
uh, I don't know if it will take some uh, like th the connector is a standard one, but it's a longer card and uh, I don't know if maybe a 2008 Wi-Fi card will work. I will probably test that. But yeah, um, Edge is maybe a little bit faster. And so talking about performance then, uh, so this machine is running with three gigs of RAM. And the reason I did that is that I tested a different configuration with both uh, three gigs of RAM and this Geekbench is five and um, and four gigs of RAM. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where is that? Yeah, here it is. So here you can see the score for four gigs of RAM and here is the score with three gigs of RAM. As you can see, the score for Geekbench 5 is almost identical. Uh, it's very consistent also, like the score is always the same, uh, like maybe one point deviation. So this is not um, uh, standard, like this is not a margin of error. Like the four gigabyte machine constantly, constantly scores around 550 and the three gigabyte configuration you always scores around 540. But I don't think that the difference in performance justifies the four gigabyte configuration. And this machine will not detect more than three gigabytes of RAM. So the reason to go four gigabyte is just to uh, have a little bit more performance because it's a symmetric dual channel. While if you go for three gigabytes, so one two gigabyte stick and one gigab one one gigabyte stick. Uh, you will have this light, slight, slight decrease in performance. But as the two gigabyte sticks are a bit expensive, like for this kind of computer, like this, they're, they're more than five euros, let's say. Uh, and I find it to be a little bit of a waste to have one gigabyte of RAM for this tiny improvement in performance and no additional actual RAM on the system. I decided to go three gigabytes. I hope that's clear. And another thing that is very interesting is that on this machine, the Geekbench 5 score is higher than the Geekbench 6 score. So the Geekbench 6 score is 253 for single and the Geekbench 5 is 311. While, for example, in this other machine, the uh, Geekbench 6 is higher than the Geekbench 5. And I think the reason is that this machine, which is a Dell, uh, 2014 machine has AVX2 instructions. It's a Haswell CPU, and the Haswell CPU has AV, is the first one with AVX2. And I think that the Geekbench, as far as I read in the documentation, the Geekbench 6 benchmark uh, he heavily relies on, on AVX2 and will uh, therefore perform much better when that when the kind of instruction is available. And now the most important thing about this machine is, of course, undervolt, which is like uh, very, very important to keep the temperature and the noise under control. Even though this machine has been extendedly modified with the uh, thermal pads on the inside, I will show you. So here you can see some thermal pads. Uh, the machine is not fully closed, so they're not pressing that much on the top cover, but there is a lot of them also on the bottom to make sure that the heat pipes are also contacting with the bottom of the machine. So the bottom aluminum frame is uh, very, very hot and will therefore dissipate a lot of heat through that. And even st still with all those kind of modification, I'm still hitting 80 degrees, but the machine is very, very quiet. And also this machine, because of the uh, instruction set support, which is uh, SSE, I think four, does not support any macOS older than um, El Capitan. So it will not run Sierra even with a patcher. It will not run High Sierra even with a patcher. So because of this and because of the lack of undervolting in macOS, uh, I, I really prefer to run Windows. You get much better application support, the, all the newest browsers, and you get undervolt. So it's really a no-go for win for Mac OS on these machines. I always run Windows on these. And yeah, the performance for everyday use is 
is okay. Uh, I also did a Cinebench here, it's 100 points. Uh, I was able to get one as high as 107. And of course the screen is gorgeous, like that's <laughs> that's the main thing about this 17 inch. Uh, so I think if you download some video files and 1080p, you can easily watch films, movies on this. And it's a very, very nice machine to just like just look at stuff. <laughs> uh, I would really like to find a solution for the 1080p uh, YouTube. So if you have any suggestion about that, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, some kind of application at, at the current time of filming this, uh, YouTube recently um, had um, a total block of any kind of ad blocker. So they're not working with any kind of ad block enabled on the browsers. And I think that is also preventing most of this application from working. Uh, Windows might be another way to get uh, YouTube 1080p working. I'm not sure about that. Uh, okay, let me just show you one video to show you how choppy it is. So as a very interesting thing, I just went to one of my videos and there is no 480 option on this video for some reason. So 360 is the only available step before 720 and as you see 720 is quite choppy. Uh, it is, you can see, you can look at that, it's not like, it doesn't make you scream for, for help, you can watch that, but uh, you can see that's choppy, and yeah, that's the really, the really huge takedown of this machine, if I was able to, to watch 1080p or even 720 at the perfect speed, at the right speed, I would be very happy, and I've seen people do that with the 720p videos, but it's not a thing anymore in the late 2023. Um, yeah, I think that's all that I had to say about this machine. Uh, ciao!